The polar vortex has arrived and severe weather is sweeping Colorado. Temperatures dropping more than 50 degrees in Denver and we're not done yet. I'm Denver 7 Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson expecting negative double digits overnight. I'm tracking the extreme Arctic air across the state and just how low the temps will go. Snow's coming down and it's making things slick. I'm Rob Harris and I'm live tracking conditions in the metro. Plus, warming shelters opening as cities scramble to get the most vulnerable out of harm's way. I'm worried about the cold. I'm going to freeze out here. And an expert's urgent warning for anyone preparing to brave the storm. This is like Antarctica temperatures. I'm expecting to see frostbite. We have officially crossed into serious weather situation with temperatures now in negative degree territory. And Denver currently registering and there's uh, no more uh, cold. To, there is more cold, a lot more cold mm. to come. National Weather Service reporting a minimum wind chill, negative 20s for the front range, down to negative 50s for some areas east of Denver. So we have live team coverage for you on this Denver 7 Weather Action Day. Rob Harris chasing the storm across the metro where heavy snows piling up. Danielle Kreuter is looking at warming shelter options in the city. All right, first our Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson with a look at the radar and of course that thermometer, Mike. Oh, it is so cold out there right now. Not much going on in the Pearl Street Mall in Boulder as temperatures are below zero there. Five below currently in Boulder, the same as we are downtown. It's minus nine at DI. Golden is down to 11 degrees below zero. And across the state, the temperatures are very cold. The Northeast Plains, 12 below at Sterling and Akron. The cold air hasn't really gotten up and over the mountains quite yet, so it's not as bad on the western side of Colorado. 44 Four below wind chill factor right now at Sterling, 38 below at Akron and minus 22 here in Denver. Dangerous wind chills tonight through Friday morning. Winter storm warning for the mountains, southern mountains, winter weather advisory, and you can see the bands of snow moving along behind that cold front. Already about five inches parts of the Boulder suburbs and the heavier snows are dropping southward. If you haven't picked up much snow yet south of Denver, you will as this storm continues to push farther to the south. Tumbling temperatures, dangerous wind chills, slick roads from snow. We'll keep all the closure updates updated for you at the bottom of your screen. All right, thank you, Mike. And snow really hammering the mountains right now. US 40 westbound closed from Kremlin to Steamboat Strings because of safety concerns. And check this out, our neighbors up to the north Wyoming State Patrol posting this video saying they have responded to more than 700 calls for service. That's just tonight. Denver 7's Rob Harris is joining us live in Thornton with worsening conditions out there. So, uh, all right, Rob, break it to us. How is it out there? Uh, well, it's negative eight degrees. So, and that might give you a little bit of a clue. <laughs> what I will say though is I've been out here um, off and on all night. Obviously, we've been staying mostly in the car to keep warm, but we've seen the winds die down a little bit, and that's made it a little bit more tolerable, actually, even as the temperatures have come down a little bit more. But I'm right off of I-25 here in Thornton, and you can see uh, the traffic is taking it a little bit slower. Some cars, frankly, going a little bit faster than they should, if you were asking me. I don't know if you were, but um, I do want to show you this video that we took, my photographer and I, when we went on I-25. This is between the 144th and 136th exits. And um, you can see that it's pretty solid pack of snow there on I-25. We have been seeing the snow plows both on the interstate and here on the side roads, but they're just trying to keep up at this point because we are seeing the snow consistently fall and some of that blowing snow too is making it hard for them to keep up in real time. We've been seeing uh, tweets also from the city of Westminster about their plows out trying to keep up, but the main message from the crews is just stay home if you can. And Shannon, all right, you stay warm. Get inside. Thank you. Colorado Department of Public Safety has opened several warming centers across our state from Walsenburg in the south to Fort Collins in the north, Breckenridge to the west, Las Animas to the southeast. There are more than two dozen locations for people to warm up. In the city of Denver opening two 24-7 warming centers for those who need them. The downtown Denver YMCA will open tomorrow morning at 7. That one can hold up to 100 people. And tonight the Denver Coliseum already is taking in people. And city leaders say these are for anyone, including recently arrived migrants and people who are homeless. And both these centers will stay open through Saturday morning. Denver 7's Danielle Kreuter live from Civic Center Park tonight. Daniel, you were heading to the Coliseum and then uh, Mother Nature had other plans for you tonight. 
Yeah, you know, it only took us about three blocks to just see multiple cars, even trucks spinning out. So the roads are bad, likely going to get worse. So definitely plan it now for your morning commute that the roads are just going to be ugly. But earlier today, I spoke with advocates who spent all day and afternoon doing outreach to the homeless community, handing out flyers like this that let them know about the Coliseum shelter and other shelters nearby and how to get to them. Meanwhile, community members stepped up in a pretty big way. They wanted to help out those in the homeless community who are making the tough decision to stay outside tonight. This is the last load that I have. Colleen Winnicka is ready to help. OK, I think I finally got it all. With bags and a wagon packed to the brim, she hit the streets. There you Thank are. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I have a bunch of extra candy, a bunch of well, I don't know how many extra hot hands, maybe 40. She's giving out these so-called kind boxes. They're filled with snacks, gloves, hats and socks. On the packages we wrote, if you need to stay warm tonight, uh, this package is for you. Her coworkers pitched in to make 100 kind boxes. You got a place to go tonight because it's supposed to get nasty cold. They've talked about, um, you know, not having anything, being cold, um, you know, frostbite on their hands, nowhere to stay. So it's really, really sad. She says if it inspires one person to help someone else. Yes. Here's this too, oh, a little extra blanket. Or um, even helps save someone from these temperatures. Yeah, I'm worried about the cold. I'm going to freeze out here. It will be well worth her effort. Meanwhile, as the devastating cold finally moved in Wednesday Manny, night. Armenda, Eric Baca. Names were being read out loud at a candlelight vigil. Tonight is our annual memorial for those that have passed away while experiencing homelessness in Denver. We do know that a large proportion of people unfortunately passed away due to exposure, um, which you know we're seeing here tonight. John Bell. As people gathered to remember, advocates hope we all do our part to help those experiencing homelessness during these extreme conditions. If you are out and about and you see somebody outside, you know, please, um, you know, speak with them, let them know that shelter is available. If you have supplies to give them, they've probably had a really rough night. Um, so just, you know, use your compassion and your sympathy and make sure that people are safe. And those advocates say they will be back out tomorrow morning to check on anyone who may have chosen not to go to a shelter, make sure they're OK and that they have the resources they need. But they say tomorrow their big goal is to get as many people as they can inside shelter as there are more bitter cold temperatures ahead. Reporting live in Denver tonight, I'm Danielle Kreuter, Denver 7. All right, Danielle, thank you. And this winter storm combined with the ongoing migrant crisis has put a strain on the city of Denver's resources. Mayor Michael Hancock says the city is at a breaking point. I implore Congress and the administration to act and to act quickly. We need bold interim steps today, but we also need a long term strategy and plan and policy around immigration. Now, a quick look at the numbers as of noon today. 110 new arrivals came overnight. That brings the total number of migrants since December 9th to roughly 1,431. 479 are currently in city emergency shelters. 301 are currently in partner shelters. And the city says if either the Denver Coliseum or downtown YMCA run out of space, city staff will help find shelter somewhere else. All right, DIA also right in the middle of this storm tonight. Newsy correspondent Lori Jane Gleha took this video. Her flight was delayed several hours because of the ice. Now she was eventually able to get on board but has been sitting there on the plane on the tarmac for hours. Gleha says they're not able to get back to the gate because none of the planes currently there are pulling away. And at last check, 721 delays reported at Denver International tonight. 154 flights canceled. Of course, the timing couldn't be worse, right? This severe weather slam in the U.S. on some of the busiest travel days of the year. Other major airports in cities like Chicago, Detroit and New York, they're in the thick of it. Still, Chicago's O'Hare and Midway airports say they are prepared. We have uh, th 500 staff members who are ready to work 24 seven and 350 pieces of uh, snow removing equipment, uh, lots of salt and lots of de icer for the roadways. And despite the necessary precautions, delays and cancellations, yeah, they're happening. The National Weather Service is urging people to reconsider any travel on Thursday. 
A good reminder for those looking to change flights ahead of time. Experts say the first flight of the day, that's your safest bet because those flights have a 25% higher on time arrival rate compared to the last flights of the day. And if you do have to go outside, wear multiple layers of the heaviest clothing you can. You also want to cover up as much skin as possible to prevent frostbite. These are Arctic temperatures. The wind chill factor is going to be, you know, very sub zero temperatures we're talking about. Exposed skin on your face, your hands, feet, ears, nose, all those areas are at high risk for frostbite, even within a few minutes of being out there in those kind of temperatures. UC Health's Burn and Frostbite Center says when it's five degrees outside with 30 mile per hour winds, frostbite can set in in 30 minutes. Now, when it's negative five, same winds, it only takes 10 minutes. So if you think you might have frostbite, a couple of tips here. Of course, get out of the cold as fast as you can. Warm the affected area, but do not warm that area in hot water and seek medical attention as soon as possible if your skin turns blue or gray. And our Denver 7 digital team is tracking everything from weather warnings, power outages, road closures. Remember, you can find all of that information anytime and much more on our website, denver7.com. And you can stay up to date with current temperatures and every weather advisory there is with the Denver 7 Plus app available in the Apple or Google Play Store. It's free. We also have it for your streaming devices.